Well, good morning. It is Friday, November 19th, and we're at the end of the week on followership. There are five topics that I want to cover in this uh, video. Uh, I want to recap and underscore some of the points on followership. I want to give you a peek into next week, which is around seeking advice from others. Uh, I'm going to make some comments on grading. I'm uh, going to talk about the second course assignment and then some final thoughts on Thanksgiving. First, on followership. You know, when I designed this course this past spring uh, and I decided what topics to include, followership was one of the uh, very important topics. And I chose it because I know that. Uh, it's probably the only time you'll ever have an opportunity to even discuss this issue. Unfortunately, it's not part of our uh, normal lexicon, but as you know, we are more we spend more of our time following others than we do leading others. Uh, the The gist of this of the points that I've made uh, are fifteen to twenty years old from my consulting experience. Uh, as many of you know, uh, I was uh, involved in working with large corporations around implementing large-scale change. And as part of that, we would often do stakeholder analysis. Now, most of you probably know what I mean by that. That's basically identifying who the key stakeholders are and where they are r related to the issue at hand. Now, what I, um, as you also may know, I, I did, I used to speak a fair amount about change management and did some writing about that. What I'm about to say in the, the topic here doesn't mean I'm right, it's just my opinion. And uh, so I'm going to share that with you. The, the most important thing is that I think we need a language to talk about followership much like we needed a language to talk about ethics. Remember, I made an important distinction between an ethical issue and an ethical dilemma. And I gave you what the criteria were for each of those and how to define an issue and how to define a dilemma. Similarly, regarding followership and uh, commitment, we use our language loosely. Uh, we use, gee, do you buy into that? Uh, uh, what do you think? I'm on board. Uh, you know, things of that sort that are, are uh, fine in normal conversation, but they lack the precision and the shared definition for us to actually understand what each and other is talking about. So what I've done is I've tried to give and introduce a language uh, associated with levels of followership and different types of followership and levels of commitment. And I encourage you to read my weekly commentary uh, that I spent a fair amount of time yesterday preparing. Uh, I think this is actually an important enough topic that I would encourage you to discuss it with your teams and to get their perspective on it. Feel free to uh, share any of the materials that I, uh, that I have prepared. Now, let me give you a football analogy to drive home my point. And some of you actually touched on football as, as an analogy. Those of you that aren't sports fans, I apologize. But in football, uh, envision a situation where it's third down we're playing U.S. football, third down and seven yards to go to, for the next first down. And uh, there's something called a huddle, and back to the huddle comes the wide receiver and says, I'm wide open, pass me the ball. And then the uh, running back says, no, just give me the ball and I'll get the first down. And there's a debate in the huddle. Now, first of all, you have to recognize who's the decision authority. And in professional football, the decision authority is usually a person on the sideline who uh, voices the calls the play from the sideline, and then the team is there to execute the play. 
So the decision authority is either the coach or the offensive coordinator or someone of that sort. And the veto authority is the quarterback. So the, the play is called, and uh, let's say it's neither. Throw it to the wide receiver or give it to the halfback. It might be a quarterback sneak. At that point, by the way, there's only 45 seconds for the debate to take place, if there is an, even a debate. At the point in time which they all clap and break the huddle, the debate's over, and people have to line up behind the play. It, you cannot have the left guard say, well, I don't agree with that play, I'm not going to block, or the running back saying, well, that's a stupid play, uh, you know, I'm just going to stand there and watch it. Uh, everybody has a role to play, and they uh, are counted on to play it. Now, let's say that you are counted on to do some blocking, but you fundamentally disagree with the play and you can't get behind the play. What is it that you should do? Should you act like you are uh, behind it even though you're not? Well, my solution is you get off the field. Uh, if you cannot fulfill what's expected of you for that play, uh, then you have to get off the field. Now, the uh, different people on the team will have different roles, and the importance of them to the success will be different. So there may be some people that compliance is fine because they don't have to block. They don't. All they have to do is basically stand there. But there are some other people that uh, are critical to the success of the play, and if their level of commitment is not what is needed, then it's actually their obligation to get off the field for that play. Uh, by the way, I didn't say get off the team. I didn't say off out of the game. I said off the field for that play. All right, so that's very important, what I want you to read about because we haven't talked too much about, at implementation time, the role that you or your team plays uh, for successful implementation has an associated commitment level that is necessary. And if you are not at that commitment level, the leader either has to attempt to move you to that commitment level, or you've got to be uh, pulled off that play. So that's my, uh, that's my story of football around followership. I uh, hope that's useful to you. Let me move to next week. Uh, seeking advice from trusted advisors. Now look, we are always seeking advice uh, from people. Oftentimes we're seeking advice from our spouses or significant others, sometimes from our bosses, sometimes from peers, sometimes from just friends. Um, but what's interesting is not just who we go to, but why do we go to them and uh, what do we expect in return when we do go to them. So that's going to be next week. And it's going to be hopefully a light week because, as you know, it's here in the States, it's Thanksgiving week. So there's no uh, module assignment. There's a discussion and some readings. Uh, as you know, you don't actually have to do the readings to participate in the discussion. Please, at a minimum, try to do one, maybe two of the three readings, because uh, I think they're, they're very good readings. But let's partic participate in the discussion, uh, hopefully earlier in the week rather than later in the week. Let me talk about grading. Uh, those of you that have given me the feedback on what should I consider as lowest grade, thank you. I, I take that as, uh, as interesting advice. You were uh, uh, not consistent uh, in what you told me, but that's fine. I'll use, uh, I will incorporate that into my thinking. Uh, by now, you should know how you're doing in this course. As you know, there are three components. There is the weekly discussions, of which we've had, I think, 14 or 15 of those. Uh, so uh, those get average and form one third of your grade. 
There are the weekly assignments, which I think we've either had nine or eight of those. And then those all get averaged and form one third of your assignment. And then there are the two course assignments, of which at the end of this week you will have submitted one of the two. And those two will be averaged to form one third of your course assignment. So the bulk of the input for your grades is behind us. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't go up or down. I would expect you to go up and not down, but uh, you should have a pretty good idea of where you, uh, where you stand. Well, uh, next Thursday is Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't view Thanksgiving as an American holiday, although it is. Uh, I view it as an opportunity for all of us, regardless of where we live or what our heritage is, uh, to be thankful for what we have. And if you're taking this course and you are in an advanced uh, you know, MBA course, I suspect that there's a lot that you can be thankful uh, for. And it's a good opportunity for us to put things in perspective. Uh, I know that we all have difficulties in our life, uh, but if we could uh, uh, look at the things that, uh, that we have, the abundance that we had, uh, it will help fuel us uh, during the more difficult times. So be thankful. Happy Thanksgiving Day. I will be on next Friday, uh, and we have really uh, only two more weeks of, uh, of discussion in our, uh, uh, before the, this course is over. It has flown by, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you next Friday. Thank you.